Yeah. What are you unhappy about? I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, you are going to learn how to land your copter with air mode enabled. A lot of people have a lot of trouble landing with air mode enabled, and that's a shame because in my opinion, air mode is the way your copter should have worked from the beginning. I've got a video on what air mode is and what it's really doing under the scenes, but suffice it to say that air mode improves the authority of your copter at low throttle. If you want to be able to drop your throttle all the way down to idle and still control your copter, you need air mode. And sure you do. You need to lower your throttle when you're uh, lining up a turn or when you're inverted and you don't want to pull yourself down towards the ground. You want to be able to lower your throttle and still get full authority. And so you want air mode. But if you can't land without the copter flipping out, then you got a problem. Don't worry, I'm going to teach you how. So today I'm going to demonstrate how to land with air mode on. Air mode is on on this copter as it is on all of my copters. And I'm going to show you how I land with it. The first thing I need to tell you about landing with air mode on is you should be using stick arming, or switch arming, <laughs> backwards. You should be using switch arming, right? Because the stick arming where you go down and to the right is not immediate enough. You need to be able to disarm sort of at an instant's notice uh, because if you don't disarm and you touch down, then the copter bounces which is, of course, the problem that you're always trying to solve. Let me demonstrate. If I take off, and then I try and land without disarming, oh, well, that actually worked really well. I'm kind of amazed. I pulled it off. I'm awesome. You all suck. I'm better than you. <laughs> no. Yeah, the copter will bounce, right? So what you need to be able to do is disarm the moment you touch down. And if you try to do that with stick arming, you're not going to be able to do it quickly enough. So then, what you need to do, let me go out into the field, I'll do it out here. What you need to do is, you need to get good control of the copter and good altitude control. So what you want to be able to do is fly slowly forward and establish a descent like so, right? So. Just fly straight forward, pitch back to control your speed, adjust your throttle to maintain altitude, and then adjust your throttle to slowly lose altitude at a nice slow speed. Okay, so that's the first exercise to do, and that's just landing 101. Okay, that's just basic how to land a quadcopter, right? So establish that you're flying forward, right? You pitch back to slow down, you'll notice I lowered my throttle a bit and establish a descent. Okay, so then the problem you run into is that when you touch down, if you don't disarm, the copter kind of starts bouncing and flipping out. Then what you need to do is just flip the switch to disarm. So I, I actually use this switch up here to disarm and I find it's a little hard to reach when I'm using the hybrid pinchy grip. Um, I originally started doing that when I used thumbs, and you can see if I switch to my thumbs, it's much easier to get my fingers up there, right? So what I'll typically do, this is a little awkward, and, but what I'll typically do is I'll just switch to thumbs when I'm getting ready to land. You could easily choose to use one of these switches up here, uh, which are easier to get to if you're using a pinch grip, if you, if you decide to do that. I like having the great big switch on the shoulder be my disarm switch. That's just a matter of personal preference and, and muscle memory. If you've got a way that you've done it forever, best just keep it that way because that's what you're used to. So, uh, let me find a nice flat spot to do this in. I'm going to establish my descent. And then just like that. just like that. That's how you land in air mode. It's not, it's not complicated. You 
You just got to get the timing down for when you're close enough to the ground that it's time to chop, throttle, and disarm. That's just a matter of practice. You don't have to be super precise about it, although if you're not super precise about it, then your copter will flip over. You see, I did that one when I was high off the ground on purpose because I wanted to demonstrate that you didn't have to be super ultra precise. And now the copter's upside down and I have to go walk over and pick it up. So I'll see you in back here in one second. So I'm just gonna do a few more to show you I'm drifting here. If you can't really hover very easily, you may find this hard. If you can't hover, the thing to do is to establish a forward trajectory and then slowly pitch back. But don't ever transition to a hover where you start drifting backwards perhaps and you sort of lose, lose awareness. If you can establish a hover, then go ahead and do that. If not, it's better to be drifting slightly slowly forward Wait till you're close to the ground, and disarm. Now I think my camera got jostled a little bit in that landing, in the, in the upsidey downy landing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in some more up tilt. And you'll see it's a little different if you've got more up tilt, yeah. So now I'm gonna put in closer to 45 degrees of up tilt. Um, landing with up tilt is a topic, is a different topic. Um, I have a video on that, but it's easiest to do to judge your altitude, especially if you have a wider angle lens like a 2.5 or 2.1 or even a 1.8 millimeter lens. So if you're flying with a 2.8, you'll find it pretty hard to judge your altitude. You can see here, I can still see the ground uh, in the camera. It's about maybe a tenth of a way up the screen, even when, so I can still sort of see it coming up when I go to land. So this is about a 45 degree angle roughly. And if I go to land, see I'm much, I'm much faster at cruise here. But the landing, I gotta find my slow down, slow down point. There we go, slow down. Just like that. I tell you, the single biggest thing I would suggest you practice is, is getting a, a sense of what the horizon looks like when you're about to touch down. So you can judge when you're just a smidge off the ground and go ahead and land. Now see, as you get better, judging the point to cut the throttle and, and, and uh, hit the disarm switch, becomes, you don't actually have to be as precise if you can judge that point where you need to chop. You can be a little less precise. The landing won't be as pretty, but it can look pretty good. Now see I turned over there. But it was still a perfectly, uh, a perfectly safe, gentle landing. Just not the prettiest one. Let me give a little bit more even up tilt. There we go. Now we got enough up tilt. I can't even see the freaking uh, propellers at all. So that's probably getting closer to 50 degrees, maybe. Uh, maybe 45, 50 degrees up tilt. It's not quite 60, I'm pretty sure. So first I'm gonna need to just kind of dial in a feel for what the horizon looks like when I'm slowing down. Now see, I can't judge my altitude as well here because I have to go to so much back tilt to slow down. But the process is kind of the same. I did, that's a technique, I'll show you that tactic next. Oh, but the damn camera's moved. If you got a lot of up tilt, you can do a kind of a, a skidding stop. You can, I'll show you. Let's get it back to where it was. You can come in a little hot and then turn around 
and you'll still be sliding the same direction and you'll be able to find a point where you're standing still and kind of chop the throttle. Cut the grass a little there. So you can see, woof, if I turn around here, there's that point right there where I'm stationary and level. There. So you can kind of slide it in like that. Um, maybe help you a little bit because you can be nose down uh, but you're still moving the same direction and eventually you find that point where you're nose down and you've canceled out your altitude or your velocity and you start going the other direction but before you do that you just quick real quick land see if I try and I can't now I'm right now I'm hovering but see I can't really see what's underneath me and so I couldn't really safely bring it in. What I could do in a situation like that is I could find an object to index off of, like this tree. This is the technique I give in my How to Land with Extreme Up Tilt video. And now I'm indexing off this tree, and that'll let me judge my altitude. I'll judge it a little bit. Oh, almost landed heads up. Okay, well, that's, uh, that's gonna be your little tutorial on how to land in air mode. Um, basically the gist of it is use a switch and then just as you're about to touch down, flip that switch and disarm. That's all there is to it. Uh, and then practice your approach. Practice your landing approach so that you can uh, so that you can come in slow and smooth and have good control of your altitude. Uh, but just like in real life I suppose in, in full scale planes Landing is 99% the approach. The actual touchdown is the easy part. I don't actually fly full scale, uh, so I'm not sure that that's correct, but it seems like it might be. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.